Good afternoon, Good ladies and gentlemen of pre-calculus, or may I say, yes, that's, we do have a couple gentlemen in here, yes. Okay, here we're going to be solving rational equations, and really, what would be the strategy in solving a rational equation, or this one? Yes. Multiply by. I mean, the, the denominator is all the same, yeah. so you can yeah. sort of just cross that out. Yeah, you, you really can. So Will is correct, but the strategy in these, where you have rational equations, is clear the denominator. challenge to spell denominator sometimes. Okay, yeah, and so Will is really right. Is if we multiply everything by three, which you do by, by, okay, if we multiply this whole equation by three, we just have left x minus two plus x plus five is equal to one. And so we have two x on the left side, two x plus three, is that right? equals one, subtract three. We have two x is equal to negative two. So dividing by two, x is equal to negative one. My pen's starting to get a little glitchy. Anyway, but look at these instructions here. Uh, support your, it says support your answer graphically and identify any extraneous solutions. How do we, how do we handle supporting graphically and identifying extraneous solutions? Any questions about that? Do I have any questions from you? I want to have a question from somebody. Uh, extraneous solutions? What yes, does that mean? thank you. What does extraneous mean? Um, outside. Kind of, kind of outside. What this mean? What extraneous solutions means is it's a solution that is not a real solution, but one that is created in the process of solving an equation. And as it turns out, for for rational equations and logarithmic equations. That's where we these things can pop up, and we're going to see that today. That's what an extraneous solution is. And then support graphically. Well, support graphically, the way I like to solve these support graphically is to solve one side of the equation for zero. So if we say, we write this as x minus 2 over 3 plus x plus 5 over 3, and what do we do to get this right side equal to 0? We subtract out 1 third, right? And so, and so now we have this equation, which means that if we graph this expression here as a function, we'll be able to see where the function touches or crosses the x-axis, giving us uh, support for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the calculator right now. So we have... Who needs a paper? So what we have here is x minus 2 over 3. And then we have plus x plus 5 over 3. Oops. That didn't come out right. X plus five over three. And then we're going to have minus one third. 
And we graph, we should see. Do you see where the graph touches or crosses the x-axis? So this is what we call graphical support. Okay, x is negative one. And is this going to be an extraneous solution? No. No, because it's a real solution. It was not created in the process. So, so this will be definitely our answer. And real solution, no extraneous solutions. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I want to do is the same, it's the same type of logic. So what's going to be our, pro, our logic of solving problem two? Uh, multiply by x. Yeah, multiply by the x, which is called clearing the denominator. And this time... I'm going to think better of it and just abbreviate denominator. How's that? So now if we multiply by, we know our common denominator is x, we multiply by x, what do we get? x squared plus 2x. Plus 2x equals 15. Yep. So what kind of equation do we have now? Uh, polynomial. A polynomial equation, more specifically than polynomial. What kind of polynomial? Quadratic. A quadratic equation. Yes, thank you. And how can you solve quadratic equations? With square rooting. Uh, square rooting is one method. So I'm going to just list the methods. So square rooting is one method. I'm going to list all, all five that I know of. Okay, what other ways can we solve quadratic equations? Graphing. Graphing. Okay, that's one of the big five. Okay, what else? <laughs> Three more ways. Table function. Quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, exactly. So what's C? I'll tell you in a bit. Okay, that's a good question. Okay, Angel's asking what is C, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So that's a very good question. Okay, so that's two methods. I mean, three methods, three of the five. Okay, what did you say? Well, actually, it's not called X method. We call it factoring. Yeah, we could use X method of that. And one other thing we have is called completing square. Now, what's going to happen is you can only use square root method. Okay, Angel mentioned square root method. Square root method only works if you don't have an x term here. It's so like if we had instead x squared equals 15, we could use the square root method for that. But we can't use it here. So it's only used where you have a quadratic term and a constant term, all right? Now, what happens is that what we're trying to do where we can is use factoring to solve. And for these three techniques here, they all involve one thing in common, first of all, which is what? Well, it is set one side of the equation equal to zero. Set, I'll just put set equal to zero. So being that factoring is what's going to be our easiest way to do it if we can, what would you do first to this? I'll subtract 15. Yeah, so if we subtract 15, we get x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to zero. Now, Angel, does that answer your question about what is C? Well, C is negative 15. Now, we can try to factor, and if we don't factor, what can we go with? The quadratic formula. Because quadratic formula will work factorable or not, 
okay? And likewise, completing the square well too. But let's go ahead and see if we can solve this by factoring. Do we have two factors for this quadratic? So we have x. So x minus 3 times 20x plus 5. No. No. Okay. Now let's use our zero factor property. I think Hannah's thinking ahead of herself a little bit. So when you set these factors equal to zero, so you set x minus three equal to zero, and x plus five is equal to zero. And so x is equal to what? Three x is equal to three, and x is also equal to five. And then you check to see if the solutions are extraneous. Are these real solutions, or both of them? Yes. Yeah, and you can test by plugging in. Another way to test... Okay, you why would x be negative 5? It should be negative 5. I just miswrote it here. Yeah, you're right. Good catch. So now you can plug in and see if they work, right? So you get 3 plus 5. 3 plus 2 equals 5. And 15 divided by 3 equals 5. And if you plug in negative 5, you'll get negative 3 here, 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3, so they both work. So these are both real solutions, neither of them being extraneous solutions. Okay? Now what I want to do is I want to spin the wheel and get a volunteer for number 3. I'll, I'll spin it for somebody here. Get somebody. I want to have Somebody. Okay, we will have a spun wheel right here. Okay, number three. All right, Hannah, this is yours. What do you do here? Me? Yeah, you got picked. The wheel picked you. All right, what do we got here? Okay, now, are there a lot of steps missing here? Yes. Yeah. So right here, if we multiply by x, we get x squared plus 5x, is that right? Equals 14. And then now we can get from here to here, right? We can see what's going on now. So that looks good. So are these real solutions, all both of them? No. Yep. Uh, let's, and it says support graphically. I forgot to support graphically on number two, but let's go ahead and do this. We got x plus five minus 14 over x. So x,
plus 5 minus 14 over x and we graph this one we get we see our solutions where do we see the solutions negative 7 and 2 okay. so the thing doesn't work just like a quadratic is the quadratic equation would go like this right but would end up at the same x-intercepts but here you have an opportunity to go back to the original equation see if see what works so these are the answers now I want you to look at number number four four has four ratchets up the complexity Okay. So now on this one here, what is going to be our strategy? Strategy is yeah, clear the denominator. We're going to clear the denominator, same as we did before. And so, what do we have to multiply by to clear the, clear the denominator? X. by we're going to multiply by this x times x minus 3 and when we do that you see we're going to clear out all our denominator elements so now we have 1 over x and we multiply by x times x minus 3 and we have minus 2 over x minus 3 and we multiply this by x times x minus 3 and finally on the right side we have 4 which we multiply by x times x minus 3 and so what happens here cancel cancel and then just put all this together. So here on the left side we get x minus 3 and then we have minus 2x and on the right side we have 4x squared and then we have 4 times x times negative 3 so minus 12x And then on the left side, we can simplify. We'll have negative x minus 3 equals 4x squared minus 12x. And we add x, add 3. We get 0 is equal to 4x squared minus 11x plus 3. Questions on that? I got a question. Well, what happens with the negative? When you do, like when you're taxing the 1 over x by the x minus 3, why did you do both of them? Like the, because the x is already on bottom, so why did you times it? Yeah, when you only times it by the x minus 3, and then the other one you only times on by x. Everything was multiplied by x minus 3, x times x minus 3. There's x times x minus 3. But there, that one should only be times, because then you would have to times the bottom by that, and that would be turned into x squared yeah. times x minus 3. I don't understand what you're saying. When you're timesing the 1, like 1 over x, uh -huh. it's already x on bottom, so you need the same denominator, so you times it by x minus 3. You times top and bottom by x minus 3. Not the, not with the x. Like you, you add another x. Yeah, what it is, is, is to clear the denominator, you have to, to clear the denominator, you have to clear every single denominator. So we're going to have to multiply not only by x to clear out this one, we also have to multiply by x minus 3. Similarly, 
we got to do it over here too. Now in this case, x over x cancels, but over here, x minus 3 over x minus 3 cancel. Uh, Mr. G, can you go look at this over here, please? Which, which problem, 4? Yeah, can you go look at this over here? Yep. So why don't you see this thing? Shouldn't like this? So this is the same dollar and then we one over oh, x squared minus three x minus two x x squared minus three x. Shouldn't that be right? Because what you're doing is you're complicating by putting more in the denominator. Well, I don't understand what you're doing. How you're getting to that from this? When, okay, what do I have to multiply by, to get rid of this x down here? By x, right? I've got to multiply by x. If I multiply just a thing by x, I would get rid of this x, but then I would still have 2x divided by x minus 3. And we could do it one at a time. But what you're doing here is you're multiplying by this denominator at the same time, and so you're you're dividing, you're multiplying every term on each side of the equation by this, and by doing that, we get rid of what our denominator is. So now we don't have anything left over here in the denominator, so we cancel that out. Here, we don't have anything left in this denominator because we cancel it out. Here, of course, we don't have anything to cancel out, but it stays there because we multiply the equation by that. Okay, but the, even after that, the x minus 3 minus 2x, what did you do with the minus 2x? Because I don't see it added on the other side. And then oh, hang on a second. I see what you're saying here. So okay, here. I have no idea how you're getting from that to that. Okay, here, okay, here you still have 2x over here. See that? So, you, so this over this cancels, but you still have 2 times x, right? So this remains uncanceled. In this one here, your x minus 3 remains uncanceled. No, after that. It's when you're down with x minus 3 minus 2x, you go to negative x minus 3. Yeah, because x minus 2x is negative x. Okay, that's just, you know, right? You see that now? And so simplification of this on the left is this. And then if you add both of these, you get you get this quadratic equation. So really it's algebraic manipulation is what that is. And then what happens is, I did this, I'm going to kind of shortcut this a little bit because as it turns out, this thing right here is not factorable because if we use our factoring method and put AC up here and this and negative 11 here, we can't work it out. And so if we can't work it out by factoring, what is our, what is our fallback thing we have to use? Yeah, Will is pointing over to the west wall, which has the quadratic formula labeled upon it. And so what I like to do for quadratic formula is x equals, I like to just write this down with the blanks here. Minus 4 over 2a. So 2a, and just fill in everything. What, what are the numbers that get filled in here? What gets filled in here? Negative 11, negative 11, and 4, A is going to be, that's going to be 4 times AC, which is 4 and 3, and over here is 4. So we end up with 11 
plus or minus. And what's negative 11 squared? It's 121. And 121 minus 4 times 4 times 3. 4 times 4 times 3, what is that? 48? What is 4 times 4 times 3? So 121 minus 48 is 73. Yes. Over 8. So this is going to be our answer for this one here. Are any of these solutions extraneous? What what you can do is you can look at you can go look at the original here and if none of these answers are like you usually find the extraneous ones here and obviously none of these will disqualify it so this these are going to be real solutions okay let me let's look at number five number five is actually easier fortunately than number four what are you going to multiply by on number five? X minus three. X minus three. Yeah. That's just, just straightforward Star. clearing of denominators. Did you say that, Kinsey? Did you say that? All right, Kinsey, you're a genius. Yeah. Or you'll be a genius for the. All right. So, anyway, <coughs> I'm going to choose somebody for number five. This thing here. Flashing out on me. Okay, number five, we go. We got Emma for five. Emma, you got that? No. Okay, it starts out, what's where we start? Where did I write down for problems one and two? Starts with a word, starts with C. Second letter, L. Clear the denominator, thank you. So how are you going to clear the denominator? Yes. So Emma, here's what I want you to do. I want you to multiply this whole thing here by X minus 3. And then proceed from there. Can you do that? Sure. Sure, she says. She looks... She kind of looked quizzically, but she said sure, which is to, which to me means, hey, I'll do my best. Next test, maybe probably next week, because it'll be a chapter two. We got to finish up chapter two, which is two points. So we're getting to the end of chapter two. We'll do some good review for it too.
Can you help check my answer? So is it, is it the opposite of what you told me? Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, I want to tell you that I'm just going to share it should be x equals, what did you say, Hannah, it was? Negative 4. And then x equals 3. x equals 3. Anybody else get those as answers? Did you get those as answers, Emma? Well, it's just how far did you get, Emma? Show us what you got here so far. Did you multiply everything by x minus 3 here? So she get x times x minus 3 and plus 4x over x minus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, on the right side we have 12 over x minus 3 times x minus 3. So what happens here? Cancel, cancel, right? So what do we have left here? So is this how far you got? Yes. This is how far Emma got. So we're gonna we're gonna take it home from here. So we got x squared on the left side. We got x squared plus x, right? Equals 12, and then so we get x squared uh, plus x minus 12 is equal to zero. And then, what do we have left here? X minus, or x four. Mm. So 4x minus 3 equals 0. So we have x plus 4 is equal to 0, and x minus 3 is equal to 0. So what is x equal to? Negative 4 and x is equal to 3. Are these solutions uh, real or extraneous? Any extraneous solutions? I see an extraneous solution here. How do, how do we get an extraneous solution out of this? What happened? Look at that and think. Can x be 3? No. Well, how do you know x cannot be 3? Because it's a denominator, the denominator is Yeah, you can't divide by, if you plug, plug back into the equation, 3 is not going to work. So here we have a situation where we have, we have, uh, I'll just put it like this, real and extraneous here. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, good. Let's go on to number six. Yeah, now on number six, you're going to need to multiply by x minus x times x minus one. Yeah, who, who told me that first? Me. That was Kenzie. All right, Kenzie, you're doing great. So do that. I'm going to, I'm going to pick somebody for this one, too. Mm -hmm. 
We'll probably be working some more on these on, on Friday, is my guess. You know, one thing that's interesting about this class is now we have we have uh, we have two lefties in the class now. Well, who's left? Hannah. Hannah. Hannah and Jana. And three. We got three. Sorry, I can't even count. I'm here working on pre-calculus, and, and counting escapes me. <laughs> and Angel's trying to be a lefty. I can write. I can write. First left and then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I can write left-handed. Like I, power of suggestion. I got a lot of people trying to write left-handed. I, mean, I can do other stuff left-handed, just not right. Yeah. I can write in broken. I can write right left-handed. It just looks awful. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. So here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose somebody here. Okay. Here we got the wheel spinning around now. Hey, here we go. We got. Look at this. Emily story. Look at Emily story. Number six, Emily. You got it. Okay. So what we have is three over x minus 1 times x, x minus 1. Is that right so far? So the way I did it is I only multiplied the first equation by x, and then we got like the first fraction by x, and then the second fraction by the x minus 1, and then 8 by the whole Since they're canceling out. Oh, so you kind of did a shortcut to it, is what you did. So what you did is you, you just, so, so mentally, and correct me if I'm wrong, mentally you just wrote it like this, right? Yes. So, so she did this in her head, plus 2x minus 1, right? Yes. Equals 8 times x times x minus 1. Yes. And so she just wrote it like this to keep it on one line, but do you see that that's equivalent? Because it's as if she multiplied by x minus 1 that canceled this out. So it just makes it look faster, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we have left here? 3x plus 2x minus 2 equals 8x squared. 8x. And then I combine my term. And then you got rid of these? Yeah. So minus 5x plus 2. So we get we get 0 is equal to 8x squared. And it's going to be minus 13x. And that's going to be just plus 2, right? Yeah. Is that factorable there? Mm, the x method. Yeah, you can use the x method. Mm. What I'm doing right now mm. is uh, I just did a little cheating. The cheating that I did, what, looking at the book, not factorable. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have is is a is is equal to eight, b is equal to negative thirteen, and c is equal to two. So we're gonna have yeah in the in the book did. X equals five square root of eighty nine over sixteen. Oh, it shouldn't be that. Because you should be divided, it should be over 16, you're right about that. But should be 13. Oh, that's right. 13 plus or minus square root of, and it'll be over 8, because 2, or 16, because 2a. So you'd have, that'll be 169 
minus 4ac, 4 times 2 times 8, which would be 64. So 169 minus 64, that's 105, right? Yeah. So this will be our answer right here. All right, thank you. We need to get our tables cleared off, guys, our, our desks. Thank you.